Illinois is a state with vibrant craft beer scenes all over the place. You've got, of course, Chicago and Bloomington Normal, Peoria, East St. Louis, and the Quad Cities, let's not forget. But we're visiting smaller Illinois communities. We're taking you to smaller Illinois towns producing big beer flavors on this episode of Brood. We are at Obscurity Brewing here in Elburn, Illinois. Uh, now, you might remember Luke from a previous episode of the show. Uh, when we met you the first time, it was at the Lodi Town We were in House. Utica. Utica. Yeah. Now, now, that's a very cool vibe down there because if you don't remember Luke's previous appearance, uh, that's a tap house that only serves Illinois beer. Up here, you've got this incredible, I mean, it's, I want to say best of both worlds, but it's really the best of three worlds because you've got beer, you've got mead, and I wish your television could pick up the smell of this place. The barbecue smells like incredible. Yeah, it's amazing, right? You know, it was funny, we were talking to a distributor uh, last night and they said, we love when your product comes in. I said, okay, why is that? He works in the warehouse. He goes, because the whole warehouse smells like barbecue. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So to the, to walk me through the idea of this place, Obscurity Brewing, like when you decided to, to, to build this place or, or take over, um, because I, I believe this was like a, a, a farm bureau. Or yeah, this was the old agri district downtown Elburn here. And it was, you know, obviously as uh, the farming evolves and this this is an older part of town that's it's moved a little bit west and these buildings were kind of left sitting here and uh, looking for uh, a new purpose, a new life. And what better than, uh, you know, to be kind of a community uh, focal center point and, and to make things something as cool as beer, meat and cider food to bring people together. But uh, yeah, we've kind of come in here, reclaim this agri district and, uh, um, you know, so excited to have been able to do it. It seems like a lot of plates to spin to have beer and cider and mead all being made by the same place. That's kind of unusual, right? It is. Yeah, it is. So we've got the, uh, you know, obviously the brewery uh, production side over here, as well as the, uh, and, and for those of you at home, we've got uh, two different locations here in town. So right. it's really kind of a campus of sorts where um, we've got the brewery and the restaurant and the, that's probably the, the main spot you're gonna come visit. But then if you're uh, fortunate enough across the street, there is a small uh, tap room. It's uh, one of my favorite places. Uh, it's put together really nice, comfortable, um, but it's a traditional tap room and a, uh, that's where all the meat and cider happens. So uh, two, two spots where the magic's made uh and a campus worth of uh experience so you mentioned the campus too in terms of like when the weather is nice uh the outdoor seating here is unlike anything i've ever seen <laughs> it's pretty great yeah well, again we were fortunate you know to kind of have this agri area i think those were where the old stockyards used to be um yeah when COVID came in we we really didn't have plans to put in a beer garden like that but uh we pivoted through that beer garden and it's really become the focal point of our summer uh, fun and excitement. Um, then we have also got a uh, warehouse building next door where we run a lot of events and if, if it rains we just roll inside and have a lot of fun. So yeah we're fortunate in that we've got uh, the space and uh, really um, a lot going on. Uh, obscurity Brewing. Why Obscurity? What's, what's the significance of that name? Yeah you know I think it was a lot of things right. I think it was uh, uh, our location for one you know I mean, we're at the end of the western suburbs or the beginning if you're coming from the Quad Cities. Right. Uh, second of all, we incorporate a lot of honey into the beers. Uh, Braggot uh, is really something we're proud of, and that's just obscure. It's weird, um, you know, in the, on and on with the barbecue and some of the other things. I mean, it was just a weird melding of all the things that we were kind of passionate about, and it became an obscure concept when we uh, kind of put it all on paper, and we felt like the name was just fitting at that point. Braggot is, is a style that you may not be familiar with because the idea is, and I guess there's some debate as to whether or not it's beer with mead or if it's mead that's made with hops and, and barley. Uh, do you have an opinion on that? And, yeah, and also, you're right. There is no real book on it, right? right. So it's, it's such, it is a very obscure drink. I call it uh, the gateway uh, drink to mead. So uh, if you're a beer drinker and you're a little hesitant on mead, uh, I think a braggot's a good way to start because though a braggot can be very mead forward in its flavor profile, it can also be uh, very beer pro, uh, forward. Ours happen to be very beer forward, and it's debatable. But the 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 fermentable uh, base uh, on a braggot should be somewhere between uh, uh, thirty to fifty percent honey, 
Uh, so you basically move back on the grain bill and introduce the sugars from the honey as your additional fermentable. And in the beer that we're drinking here, our good kiss, you know, you really get that buckwheat honey that finishes out on the end. So it's a matter of complementing those honey flavors along with, you know, the, uh, the creation and the design of the beer. One braggot that I had before we started rolling here, um, it was remarkable, but you had pointed out that it had, like the finish had this really wonderful honey finish. Yeah. And of course the kind of honey you use is important. You said it was a buckwheat honey. Yeah, right? yeah. I mean, so that was really the exciting. That was kind of a really exciting journey too, as we kind of got down this path. Was breweries focus on all the different styles of hops you can use, and all the different styles of grain and malt you can use. This opens up a whole nother bag of tricks. All the different styles of honey you can use. Right. Anything that's uh, being pollinated, the bees are picking up that flavor profile. So we're using cranberry honey. We're using orange blossom honey. We're using. Uh, basswood honey, which has like a real marshmallowy uh, flavor to it. The one you're talking about is a buckwheat honey, um, which has a little more of like a roasty uh, uh, flavor profile to it. And uh, yeah, it, but still sweet. Uh, and yeah, that melds really well with this IPA that our brewers put together uh, that complements the hop build he had in there. And then uh, as you kind of go through the process of tasting that drink, uh, it just kind of coats your tongue and finishes with that with that nice, pleasant flavor. And I can behind. see what you're talking about it being a, a gateway, because if you're someone who doesn't enjoy meads, I mean, I happen to think they're terrific, but if you're someone who doesn't enjoy meads, you're getting the full beer experience, but then with that mouthfeel and the end of the mead, you are getting, again, it seems to be a running theme here, the best of, of all possible worlds. Right, but mead itself is an interesting spectrum too, right? Just like beers where you have blondes to imperial stouts and everything in between. Mead's really the same thing. And unfortunately, a lot of people might have grandpa's uh, mead he made at home and it was a traditional and they just didn't like it. Well, you know, uh, you can put nitrogen in a, in a mead. You can carbonate a mead. Uh, and the flavor profile on a mead is just as wide as it is in beer. Um, so it's really fun to take somebody from a braggot and have them try, you know, a mead that's maybe are closest to maybe like a Berliner Weiss or something. And I'm going, this is mead? And then have, watch them kind of progress through the, uh, their drinking experience into um, some of the other options that are out there and really enjoying it. It's like you're, you're having a beer or a mead or a cider in some sort of like Willy Wonka experience where the, the pipes are over your head and, and there's also lots of singing for some reason. Uh, <laughs> it's a happy place. It really, you know? it, it, it really right. is.